Welcome back, everybody. Kathy Arbor here. Let's bring you in so you can see this Santa. So today, we had to do a Santa for Christmas. So I, I saw this one and I thought, this is so cute. And this is um, one of my uh, licensed um, downloads that I have. And you can uh, find this in Patreon or on my YouTube membership. And it's for all levels. If you want to download the traceable, I have a traceable for this. And you can play along. So I've already uh, put it in my book here. Here. We're going to do it this way. Just so that it's a little bit bigger. And hopefully you can, uh, might have to bring you out a little bit. Let's see. Yeah, bring you out a little. So you can see the Santa and everything. Hey, Lena. Good to see you. Hope you're doing well. Yeah, isn't he super cute? <laughs> well, I thought so. I'll bring my paints over a little bit. I think that's good for you guys. Maybe I'll just fold this down a little bit more. That way you can see it a little better. So this is going to be done on sketchbook paper. And because of that, I'm not going to do a lot of layers. But I will possibly be doing some uh, colored pencil on top if I need to. But we'll see. So we'll see how it looks as we go. So I have a couple of brushes here and one's a number six a Skoda Rionos, I think you call it. There you can see it. And the other is my favorite. It's a silver black velvet and this is a number eight. So I put it down here and um, if you don't like lines on yours, you what you can do is take a kneaded eraser and just, this is a kneaded eraser, and you usually have to pull it to clean it up a bit, soften it, and then um, you can roll it across your page and it'll lift some of your graphite. And then uh, it won't uh, be as noticeable. So you can either roll it. I like, I usually just lightly, just go over the top, just slightly. And that way it'll just limit how much you're going to see through the paint. Just giving it a little bit of. All right, uh, let's see if I go back a little bit. Maybe you can see it better then. Not too bad. I guess I'll leave that. We'll see what the colors show up like. So we're going to start off light. So uh, probably the see the lighter colors in the middle of the nose here. This area right here is almost got a ochre tinge to it, very pale. And then around his cheeks and the bottom of his nose are more on the pinky rose side. Hey, Joe. Hope you're doing well. Hope the weather's behaving where you are. It's very cold here today. I'm in southern Ontario, Canada. Mm, I'm going to just use some raw sienna. 
I, I pre-wet my palette beforehand. And that way you're, you're not scrubbing it with your brush as much. And I want it fairly uh, watered down. I just want a very light coat, especially in the middle here. So I'm just going to put, and this is wet on dry, and I can't do a whole lot of um, uh, coats, layers, because eventually working on sketchbook paper, your paper will start to pill. I'm just going to bring it over to the side here because he has wrinkles, of course. Matter of fact, you could probably just do the whole area in this because it's so light. Um, and we'll add the, the pinkish tones on top. Just put it in here a little bit more concentrated under there. The eye there and along the side of the nose. So I'm just dabbing. And then as fingers, I'm going to do the same thing. So just a light coat using my tip of the brush so I can have some kind of control. You want a brush that's got a nice tip to it. That. And that's all we need for his face for now until it dries. Now we'll, we don't want to try and do uh, colors around these wet areas. So I'm going to try and get this hat painted. And it's kind of, let's see here. It's kind of uh, a little bit on the warmer side. Um of red so in the, especially in the center it's almost almost the same color as the skin actually kind of a peachy color so we can start off with that and then we'll add our darker on top so we could actually just use a little bit of a stronger uh, raw sienna and then just add a tiny bit of uh, cad red to it don't have to put a lot though. Uh, fairly watered down. And I'm going to start off at the center here. And wherever the hat is, uh, just make some marks going into that white fluff area so it looks more like the fur we probably will just leave the color um, that's white in the picture as this color of the page so i'm not going to put any paint necessarily on in this area i'm just going to leave the page color for my white even though this isn't white but it'll do so you just think of your little pointy edges of your fur sticking up you don't want to have a hard square edge on the top of that because that will look kind of funny because your hairs are always pointed. Um, it is very, Joan says, it is very cold and rainy here, Kathy. Had to go into town and I got drenched. Oh no, Joan. <laughs> hey, Dot. Good to see you. Hope you're doing well. 
Uh, thanks, Kathy, for the package you sent today. Gorgeous. Oh, I'm glad you got it. That was really fast. Wow. I'm hoping uh, Lena asks. Oh, well, hope you didn't get a cold. Yeah. Um, okay. So continuing with this, I'm just going to put the same color on because this is the lightest color we need in our hat. And I can just paint over top. There's no uh, bright whites in this right now. And that's all we need. Oh, I think I'm going to put a dark, some of this dark in underneath his uh, mustache. And that will be good enough for now. Um, his nails on this side are a little, you know, just going to dab. The paper's still a little bit wet, but we'll see how it goes. Um, so um, I'm going to speed it up by using my heat gun. So... Because it's a scrap or a sketchbook paper, you want to make sure you dry in between your layers really well. And don't worry about it buckling. Uh, once you close the book after you're done, it flattens pretty well. But you don't have to do it in a book. You could actually do this on a separate piece of watercolor paper if you wanted to. Or if you want, you could even paint it with acrylics or gouache, whatever. And I do want it really well. Right. All right. Now, let's do a little bit of the hat. So the hat's got shadows, so we have a little bit of kind of this color here, also a little bit of gray, and a little, this could be Payne's gray, or uh, a French ultramarine maybe would work. And there's also a little bit in his mustache and a uh, little tassel here. So I'm going to make, um, let's see, some paints gray. I'm going to make a little mix here. And I always put in, to make a nice gray, a burnt umber. And you kind of have to play with it because it could go uh, one side or the other. So either a bluey gray or a warmer gray if you put more of the brown in. But I want this fairly uh, watered down. So I'm just going to take some of this, put it over here. A little water. I want it. I like to go light, and then if I need to, I'll strengthen it later. Little steps, basically. So, 
Um, let's take a clean brush and I'm going to wet the area first. Now you have to be kind of quick when you are doing this on sketchbook paper, but it can be done. You just have to be a little bit quick on the painting. Then I'll take just bits. This is the darkest area and I'll let it bleed. And doing this this way, it kind of gives that uh, uh, fur look, I guess you could say. And you can always take off before it uh, gets too dry. Um, you have a little bit more leeway when you're working in uh, watercolor paper. Let's put a little, little bit of um, ultramarine, French ultramarine. I'm going to just put a little bit of that over here. I'm going to just put some of that along this one edge here. Maybe a little bit thicker right along the edge. So a little more concentrated. And underneath here, be a little bit. And then you can also just add a few dabs here and there. We're in the, it's nighttime. So he's, uh, and you can just take some out here and there just to give it a modeled look. Maybe a little more black. Or not black, gray, I should say. Let's put a little bit more in there. I want it real dark right in here. Okay. And then a little bit of this skin color that we had. And I'm just going to dab a little bit of this in. Not much. Let's wet this area. And then this area, this side is a little bit lighter. So I'm going to have more blue. I'm going to put a little bit of blue in there. I'm just going to sop up some of this. If you get puddles, you can sop it up. Although sometimes um, when you get a bloom from a puddle, especially in this type of... Uh, area that I'm doing it more of an advantage because it gives it more texture and that looks cool all right and then we can sop up whatever we don't want um, this will be a little bit lighter Right there. Just sopping those pools of water up. Don't want it too crazy. And while we're doing this, let's do his uh, side of his hair here. So there is a little bit of white. The little streaks there. Now you could either do those with a gouache or bleed proof white or pencil crayon, whatever you want to do. So we have a fairly light blue area. Well, not really light blue, but kind of a grayish blue, I guess. Around his hand. And 
under his hat. I'm not worried about it bleeding in the back here. But I do want this to be fairly blue. And I'm going to just streak it up in the direction of his uh, hairline. Now these paints will also dry lighter. Okay, uh, this one is a little bit more on the gray side than the blue side. So let's put, again, it's just uh, little marks. Like that. And then also going right in here, it's where the end of his mustache is. So you want those um, hair areas to stand out. So you, same as what we did around the rim. So you kind of painting in the reverse. And a little bit on the bottom of his mustache. The shadow. And right in here, again, thinking about his mustache. Just have a little bits of streaking to show that his mustache is there. And if you flub it up, we can use colored pencil. Don't, don't get too... Uh, Worried about it. Under his nose, it's darker. Ah. Now his, his eyebrows are fairly light. I'm not going to put a whole lot. A little bit on the bottom part. Going up. Maybe on the ends a little bit. Ah. Uh, Now he does have a little bit of shadow, most eyes do, just around the edge of the eyeball. And then I'm just gonna soften it if I can. Sometimes you can't because of the sketchbook paper. All right, that looks pretty good. Well, got to do the little pom pom on his hat. A little more or less on the bottom part is the most shadow. But you do have uh, little bits going into the center. It's kind of like a ball. Think of it as a ball. Like so. Let it dry. All right, we're getting there. I'm going to dry that.
right. It's not completely dry, but we can um, work on our hat. So we want that. I got a cad red or I think uh, a lizard and crimson would be a good uh, one to spring. Well, that's kind of pinky too. Let's add a little bit of, you want to dull your colors down. Add a little bit of the opposite color. So that would be green. So if you put a little green, you desaturate it. That's better. Now, I'm going to have a little bit more of this color in here. And I'm going to leave a little, there's kind of a, this isn't the darkest color I'm going to use yet. And go up the fold of the hat. And then this over here. Now I'm going to paint kind of around some of these. I know it's tedious. If you don't want to do that, you could always use your um, white paint or pencil crayon, although pencil crayon probably wouldn't be dark enough. Uh, acrylic ink would work. We'll see how it goes. This is going to be red also up here. I'm not going to go too far because then I'll cover up that peachy color, which we need. So that gives your form of the hat, this head. A little bit like this. Pulling up the fold of his hat. Now I can take some of that sienna color again. I'm just going to put it over here. That raw sienna, a little bit of this in it. Make that color again. And I'm going to take some of that while this is still wet. Put it in here. Because you can see what is uh, drawing too light as you go. And just add a little bit more color. Like that. Now I'm going to add a little bit more of that red to this mix and a little bit of that green again I want it darker this time though and this side is fairly dark It goes up like that and then this down here is fairly dark I may just use colored pencil to uh, really darken it we'll see how this turns out it's easier sometimes just to color uh, between those lines instead of having to fussy paint around stuff 
and then a really really dark right in uh, this area and we have these little folds in the hat that And there's a real dark area right there, right along the very bottom edge. And I'm just going to dab some of that in there. Like that. Okay, that looks pretty good for now. So how many of you like to add uh, colored pencil to your watercolor? I really love doing that. I'm just going to put a little bit of shadow on the bottom parts of, and in between the... Uh, fingers, thumb, it would be the most shadowed, doesn't have to be complicated. these little lines from the wrinkles in his fingers and stuff and put those in. Let's see. This. And this will dry a little bit lighter again. I think that was probably the one thing that I had to get used to is knowing that uh, the paint will be lighter and having to put on a little bit of a darker um application that I wouldn't typically do if, say, I was doing it in uh, acrylic or that type of thing. And his fingernails are a little bit darker in this one, kind of on the reddish side. So I have a little bit more of that red mixture. That. This one has a little bit of red in the tops of the nail. See how light it dried? And then this is fairly dark in here. It's almost black, but there is a bit of red because his lips are there. So I'm just going to dab some of that dark gray mixture right in there. Uh, adding color pencil adds more definition, so it's good. yeah, that's what I think too, Joan. Alrighty, dark mixture under his nostrils here. And 
and kind of under his nose is dark, but there is a highlight also, and it's a reflected light. We'll put that in a bit. So we want that um, reddish color. And just on the base of his nostrils. Just using the very tip of my brush. He's got a nice little pudgy nose. So I'm going to take a little bit of that mixture, but more water in my brush now. And as it turns up into the nose, it gets a little bit lighter. And it will look a little uh, weird. His nostrils like that. And then we want some of that um, raw sienna mix with a little bit of the uh, red mix in it. And I'm going to add a little bit of colored pencil there probably. Now, he does have the shape of a little bit of this color. Like that. Then I want to take the same but water down and just walk it out a little bit. So it's not so hard looking. And we can take that right into the bottom of his cheek. Like this. And it's a little more uh, concentrated in color at the very base of his cheek here. And this goes into the corner of his eyes. Like that. And he has a surprised look on his face. Bit more red in here, just a little darker right in the where the corner of the eye is. Let's just add a little dab there. Now, uh, the top part of his um, underneath his hat is fairly dark. I'm going to just soften this a little bit. It's not so uh, uh, you know, soften this too. We don't want real hard edges. So I'm I'm pretty lucky to be able to move this actually. All right, so some of that raw sienna again, mix. Another batch up. And some of that red to it. Don't want it blue on the red side. more maybe a tad of green just to darken it a bit all right uh, let's see let's do these wrinkles so right along here is going to be quite dark And I will come back and darken more. 
I just want to uh, map in some of this uh, dark area. Around his uh, cheeks and stuff. He has little squints in his eyes. Uh, here and I can add a little bit of red to this bottom area. just to give it a little bit more of a blushed tone. Soften the edge if you can. And a little bit here. That one needs to be darker in there. And right on the very end of his nose is darker. But not underneath. That needs to stay a little bit lighter because that's a cast um, highlight from below. Let's see. Let's have some wrinkles. His forehead, like that, and coming across. Like that. I'm going to put a little bit of this in there again. Soften. And try to soften this up a little bit. So I'm just lightly brushing over it just to give it a little bit softer look. I had taken those down a little bit too much, just like that. And then we want a darker uh, color on the top again. A little green to my mix, more or less brownish color. So oh, I could even go darker. So let's let's put some of this in it. Just along the brim and very edge of his face will be darker. You put a little bit more of the edges of his uh Eyebrows, he's got very fuzzy eyebrows. If you want to make the edge of the hat fuzzy, you could do that too. I don't think I'm going to get too crazy, but because you want a fair amount of contrast. And this will dry lighter, remember. I'll probably go back over there. A little bit of a darker right on the very bottom of the fingers. Now, they do have... Um, a little bit of the same color right around the eye where the crease of the eye is so you can put that in just follow the line from the pattern and also around the edge of the eye it's darker 
have a good point on your brush when you're doing that. The inside of his eye, a little bit darker. Um, I, he does have um, a lot of wrinkles and stuff. You don't have to put those in, but if you want to, you can. You could also wait and do that with your colored pencil. So quite a bit darker right in there. And right under his eyebrows, a little bit darker. Uh, Yeah, he's looking pretty good. I'm gonna put a little bit. Of. This color on his. Um, fingers here. Just over top of the other one. Because it's just not two um, shadows. There's a mid shadow and a dark shadow. And we'll fix it up um, once we start doing the colored pencil. All right, let's get his eyes in. Dot's probably... Uh, Jumping at the bit there. <laughs> Get that eye in. Yeah, we'll fix this up once we get that done. Now his eyes are blue. I'm going to do a uh, cobalt blue. And Maybe well, maybe add a little bit of oh not cobalt blue. Yeah, cobalt blue and cobalt teal together just a bit and I'll change it up a little. Gives it a nice color. And I want it fairly uh watered down so Most of this will be done, like all the highlights and shadows will be done with colored pencil. Uh, kind of wonky looking. Got to get the right... Okay. Hey, Dar. Good to see you. All right. Now, the background. We're going to leave this for now. And let's do some of the background. So the background is very dark. So we could actually just do plain Payne's gray. You want you can um, change it up but I think that's what I'm gonna do is the paint's gray You gotta work around the fur, so you're making it again the little marks that will make it look uh, like a hair. So negative painting.
you can put a little bit of a difference or you could actually if you want a little bit of uh, difference in the background like two different colors go ahead and do that or you could just put this in and then remove some so making making it darker and lighter I want the corners fairly dark. It's almost using a fairly thick consistency paint. Okay, and then in between here, we want some jagged edges for the fur. A little bit of negative painting. Don't forget the hair that's sticking out too. Kind of paint around that if you can. Fairly dark in here, a little thicker paint. You could do gouache too. There's no reason why you can't do gouache and uh, watercolor together. All right, that's looking good. I'm gonna add a little bit of that just raw sienna or um, ochre if you have it. And I'm just going to use this for, it looks like a wood um, edge of a window. And we can also add a little brown to it, give it a little bit of um, different texture streaks you don't mind having that seep if you don't like that just be very careful or dry it first And a little bit of the brown here and there while well, it's wet. And of course, there would be shadow under his fingers. Um, now, this kind of splotchy uh, look around here, this is kind of a, uh, you could say it was a stucco wall or depends what you want it to represent as far as uh, where is he peeking from. <laughs> is it a 
Is it the chimney? Maybe. Brown just across the top edge here. I want it kind of uh, modeled looking, I guess you could say. Yeah, a little bit of Even dry brush looks cool. A little bit on the top here, a little bit thicker. Uh, a little bit under here. some blue in there. Let's change it up. Let's do a little bit of dark. Let's we're seeing the bottom edge of that. And I think that needs to be darker in there. And in here because it's shadowed. Shadowed under his his little fingers here. Just, um, soften the edge, though. All right. Oh, it's looking pretty good. All right, so let's dry that. Hi, AAR. I want it real good and dry now because I'm going to add poly pencil on top. Do any of you remember the milk box you would have in your? Uh, the, the outside of your house, there would be a uh, a little box where the milkman would come and put the milk. <laughs> this is what this reminds me, looking through the milk box. <laughs> All right, I have a whole assortment of um, Prisma. Oh, there's all kinds of stuff here. There's uh, uh, 
uh, Faber Castell, all promos, different ones. So let's play with a little bit of color now. I love doing this. Uh, I'm going to get my little sharpener ready. These are probably the best ones I've had. I've had many, but I still come back to these. Um, they're the brass. Mm, made in Germany. This one's called M plus R. I don't know if you can see that. And they come in different sizes. Like this one's got a large and a small sharpener on it. And I like them because you can change the blade. And these blades last a long time. And they're a good weight. And they don't eat your pencils. <laughs> um, that's the only thing I don't like about sh uh, electric sharpeners. Or I do have a... a, a rotary type sharp sharpener like you have in school well i don't know if they do anymore but they just eat your pencil and pencils are too expensive to get eaten <laughs> so let's start on uh, let's do the eyes i always like doing the eyes with that done and then everything seems to fall in place. Let's see. Uh, what I am looking for, I'll tell you the colors I'm using as I go. Let's see. Violet blue. Actually, indigo would probably be my choice for this one. Find it. Okay. I do use a lot of indigo. It's black. Ooh, maybe. I suppose I could use a really dark gray too. It's this one. Well, here's Payne's Gray by um, Polychromo. This might, this will probably do. So I want a really good sharp point when you're doing around the eyes or in small, small areas. It's a good point. Now he has a, a, a ring, which uh, quite a few people that have blue eyes have this dark ring. Goes around their outer part. Of the uh, iris. Like that. No, I've made it so that the bottom part of his eye doesn't necessarily show covered a little bit. Make sure they're as even as you can get it. You don't want it too wonky looking. And it's actually got shadow in there. I'm just going to lightly in that area. It's more or less a shadow that you're looking at. Okay. 
And then a light blue. It's kind of an aqua color. There's some of the. No, that's not going to work. Uh, let's see. You'd have to use, even if I just use a light, light color, just a bit. And then as pupil, I always use black for the pupil. And then I'll put, um, usually a, an acrylic ink for the highlight. Uh, make his pupil a little bit more dilated because he's surprised. So he'll have a bigger pupil when you're surprised. That, I think that's good enough. And white. Make sure your white is clean. You don't want to put uh, another color on by accident. All right, so fairly light on the top. You can clean up those edges a little bit. Okay. Alrighty. And then a soft gray. And that's just kind of on the bottom and a little bit along the, in the corner of the eye there. Actually, should have had, he's going to have a little bit of a turned eye. <laughs> That's okay. We're not perfect. All right, and then I want a, let's see. Um, this is dark brown or kind of a reddish brown, but dark would be good for the uh, folds in the skin up above the eye. Let's see, what's this one? Tuscan red. Let's see what this one looks like. Yeah, that'll work. Okay. So I want that also sharp because we're going to do some very small work. The Santa painting is looking me. Oh, thanks, Joan. All right. So there's actually um, shadow under his eyelid here. Might make a little bit darker. We'll see. Just along the inside of his uh, eye there, the tear duct. Be that dark also. And on the top. That. 
Um, he can't believe how naughty you all are. <laughs> Speak for yourself, Dot. And also a little bit, so I'm just lightly shading, same color above that line that I just put in, very, very lightly. And the same here, so just light, light. Want me to bring you guys in so you can see more close up. Let me know. Be a little bit shadowed on the corner here. Um, there's a little bit of a skin, I guess. And then there's just above this, there's these little lines that are kind of going on an angle, kind of wrinkles. Like that. This one doesn't have it as much. Now I'm going to take, um, this is dark brown and a darkened. Um, Hey, Lori. Thanks. A little bit darker. Hold. Just lightly. Go lightly. Just have fun with it too. Uh, this is how you learn to do things by playing and trying stuff you wouldn't typically uh, try if you were, say, doing a commission piece. That's not the time to try new things. <laughs> Okay, and then I want a color that's going to match his skin. Let's see what we got here. That might work for his nose. That usually works, this one here, which is beige, or what's the other one? I usually used uh, um, peach beige too. Oh, this one, nope, that's not going to work for this one. Depends on your tone. That one might go. That's beige again. Okay, let's use beige. Sharpen it. Hey, Xandra. What I like to do uh, is just on the parts that I do, I like to go back over top of it with a lighter color to blend it in. And it just um, blends it a little bit smoother when you do that. Just lightly though, you don't want to burnish it. You just want to lightly, because you 
may add other uh, layers on it. So you don't want to burnish it so much that your tooth of your paper is completely gone and then you can't do much with it. Um, a little bit of light area there. Okay, don't forget. Ah, oh, thanks, Dorothy. All right, yeah, it's looking pretty good. Size are a little different. <laughs> Um, let's see. This work. That should. I'm going to make a little bit more. Definition with. The... Wrinkle witch here. So I want a little bit. This is a uh, nectar. He, he's got a little bit of a rosy cheek going on here. So we need to make that a little bit more noticeable. And this will also darken that area a little bit. So I'm just lightly putting this in. If you find it's not quite the color you're using, Experiment, find out the color you need to get out. All right. So we're adding a little bit of more of the wrinkles. Wrinkles can be difficult. You really have to pay attention to highlights and shadows. Uh, a little bit of this uh, what is it, beige top just to integrate it so it's not so uh, scratchy looking. I want it smooth. I'm not going to get too crazy with the detail. I could very easily me how I roll usually but this one um yeah that could take you into hours so I'm not gonna go that far a bit up this around the edge Just keep looking at your uh, painting or drawing and look at it. Does it have enough contrast? You will be able to tell if you need to add more or not. If you squint your eyes too will help. Um, a lot of people can see uh, the contrasts when you squint your eyes and then you're able to determine where you need more highlight or shadows. A 
make a little bit of a rough edge here. Uh, loop it into there, I think. Okay, I'm going to add some of this in midsection of his nose. And then a real dark brown just on the very edge of that area that I just laid down. And then a little bit of this in here on this nostril. Really pay attention to your your highlights. Well, there is a little bit of a line here and right here, kind of where his nose is rounding. And then around the edge of his nose. Just a little bit. This could be darker in here. Same with here, especially by the nose, the nostril. He's got fat cheeks, so it's going to be a little bit more the shadow because of his cheeks, and he's smiling, I guess, or I don't know. in there and then you take your don't forget to take your colors here so this that should work his nose will be a little pinker as it typically is And then a little bit under just the very bottom here, a bit darker. Ah, I'm going to take some white just right in here. I'm going to make it lighter and right here on this nostril. That. And a little. Now I'm probably going to have, um, well, maybe not, yeah, I probably will, add a little bit of uh, white ink right there. And there's also a little bit of white grass like that because you're getting the reflection off of whatever's down below it's probably the snow a little bit lighter right here right on the tops of his cheeks because it's the part that's showing the most it's more think of a ball and a little Wrinkles would have some highlights on them too. So we'll put highlights on those. Uh, I think that needs to be a little darker in there. Oh, let's see. Let's put this in maybe, or maybe a little brown. Let's see. Just a very soft brown. Right there. And this here could be a little bit darker. In there. Yeah, keep adding. 
dark. You think it's dark enough, and then you start looking at it. And nope, not dark enough. I want some more wrinkles in here. have to highlight some of these. Be dark in there, but there's a highlight. Uh, right in there. We need to get some eyebrows in there too. Um, probably need to put either gouache or, let's see, gouache or um, paint on his eyebrows. Really dark there, too. A bit darker in here. And here, I'm going to shade this up a little bit more. I want this a little darker. shadow and then probably oh, this one here to blend it in Layers, all about layers. I'm not um, going crazy with the detail, but just have fun. And this is how you learn to do uh, color pencil if you're wanting to learn. Just, you know, the only advice I can give you is do it. Just do it. Um, actually, that can be really dark under, right in here. Real dark. Uh -huh. All right, now let's put on some bleed proof white by Doc Martin. I'm actually going to shake it. Get the brush. Not fairly small brush. So 
Let's see this go over. I don't want to use that. Um, actually, we probably could. Let's see. Let's try this one. I'm going to put in his eyebrows. And we can always go back and add put a little water in there. Add um, gray and with either paint or Uh, gouache, color pencil. I don't think this uh, dries uh, glossy, so as long as it dries matte, you can always go over it with colored pencil. That. We'll let that dry. And what other things do we need to? Oh, yeah, the white of his eye. Let's see if we can put that on. So, kind of over the top part of his eye here. Like that. And I'm going to put a little dot on the nose. I don't know if this is going to stay on colored pencil though, but we'll see. And just a smidgen on it, the nostrils. I could, they might not stay on. I might have to use acrylic. I want it a little bit wider because see how I just did a small dot, which gives it more of a pointed look to the nose. So if you make it a little bit um, oval, it gives it a little bit more of a ball shape. I don't know if that's going to... We'll see. I'm going to leave it for now. Let's do a little bit of the fingers. So really dark under the thumb here. And he does have, his nails are kind of outlined in the skin. His hands are cold. Like that. A little bit sharper, I think. I'm gonna put this on before I end up spilling it like I do. Let's sharpen this again. Hey Jilly, see you. Okay, a little bit. Here's the nail. I'm not gonna go too crazy, but. Uh, I'm gonna put a uh, shadow under his fingers with a different color in here. Let's 
side of his fingers are a little bit shadowed. He was up here in his knuckle, and down the side of the finger. A little bit shadowed. And some light color. Maybe this. I'll try this one here. That's better. A little bit of a um, highlight on his nail not uh, really noticeable though but there is some and there is definitely highlight on the top um we'll probably use a little bit more white just to bring those highlights up a little bit Hands can be um, complicated. You really have to pay attention. I can usually uh, do them, but it takes a while. I haven't done them for a while. <laughs> you have all the wrinkles and different uh, way they're laying. A bit of fingernail white on there. These aren't the greatest, but they'll do. I'm not going to get carried away with hours of making fingers. Copy this in. Um. All right, this little gray you need, and I want it more on the cool side. Let's see what we got here. Maybe What's this. No, it's warm gray. What more on the pool? Cold gray. So cold gray, this is a uh, Faber Castell. We're just going to add a little bit of uh, more marks, basically. We'd have a little bit more color shading under his nose. And down the more or less down the center. 
where it kind of curves a little bit. Gets a little darker. A little darker in here. Put some in here too. Not that noticeable, but you do notice it. Kind of follow the what you would think the hair would be laying. And I also have a darker, I think this is darker gray. Let's see. It's about the same. Maybe a little bit darker, but let's see. You can always put white over top too. Maybe some scribbles on the very bottom of the pom pom on his hat. And we can also uh, put some kind of scribbles on the bottom of his hat here too. This would be uh, fur, so you're going to have an uneven look to the shadow. And it gives it a, a cool look. I think this needs to be darker in there. Oh. Mm. Darker gray. There's a nice dark gray. A little bit darker in here. And more dark in here. Where his uh, hat would be casting a shadow on his hair. Even though it's gray. I'm going to put um, a little bit in his mustache right up here. Kind of going like that. And he needs a little bit more in um, in his nostrils. But I'm going to use a different color. So a little darker along the edges of his face. That. And maybe a little bit more in there. That. Uh, right in here, a little darker. And on the bottom. I'm just going to use this dark gray. So, right along the edge of his fingers, there'd be shadows. That. And then this one too, a little bit more underneath and along the side of the finger here. 
and right in here. Dark. Uh, Oh yes, in, in here, the fold of the cat would be darker. We also have a little bit of, as the fold goes out, it gets lighter. You got to keep that in mind. So it's darker in the center and then it works its way to be lighter. Just a little bit more in there. Okay, I actually could put this in here too, just on the very uh, edge. I think that needs a little bit more dark. Believe it or not. Okay, that's pretty good. Uh, a little bit, maybe the eyeball just over top. Let's see if that, um, that worked or not, that, this here. Yeah, yeah it's, do, it's doing it, but mm, I don't know. Let's we'll see how we do over the eyebrows, if we can put any marks on the eyebrows, because they're pretty white. <laughs> Hi, Joan. So a little bit of little marks. Thinking of how the the uh, hairs would be laying. They kind of go up and spread out a little bit sometimes, depending if they're wild or not. And then as they grow. They grow sideways and then down. So those eyebrows were pretty bright. Let's uh, see if you can. Nope, see it came off. Darn. Okay, so we'll have to put. No wonder they're probably. Oh, no, I didn't put any. Um, they won't go over top of your colored pencil. So you have to use a uh, acrylic marker of some sort. Good to know. Bigger one, I guess. Um, paint, maybe. Let's see. I guess I put paint.
kind of goes up the top of his nose a little bit. A little bit on there. Not a lot, but just a bit. Mm, and right in the corner of the eyeball. Or not eyelid. I get a good point on my brush. Let's see. Very slight. And then that. A little bit lighter. Around the a bit of a shine on the top eyelid. How much? Okay, uh, that should do. Yeah, that's looking pretty good. Uh, let's see. I want to take the white. Mm, not really doing a whole lot. Let's see. Um, I could put, let's see if I can put some white in mustache here. I think I'm going to have to use paint. I'm going to get a chainer here. I don't need much. We want a little bit of uh, highlights here and there. And actually, I wonder if I could use, let's see. My marker up. I'm going to have to get a different marker. See, these aren't doing it. Or let's try your brush. Let's try this scripter. I'm 
just seeing if this will work. A little bit better. very lightly adding a little bit of whiter areas And maybe some in here on the top. See what I mean about getting carried away by the detail? Let's soften that a little bit. I can bring the fur out too on the cap. Do I want to darken the cap anymore? Nah. Just make a few more funny marks. Looks more fuzzy. More or less on the top part. And a few speckles of snow. Can't leave Santa without snow, right? <laughs> so we can cover his face if you want a little bit. Or actually, it's outside. I just thought of something. Good thing. It's outside, so you wouldn't. Uh, He's outside looking in, so there wouldn't be snow on top of the shelving. So, cover that up. And there's fingers. And probably most of him, if you think about it. Okay, and then I'm just going to spray a few of these. And these are going to seep into the um, the background, but we can always take our acrylic ink or acrylic paint just use the end of a paintbrush and put in some bigger ones so 
So this is behind them. It doesn't have to be crazy or anything, but and don't make them um, too evenly spaced. So they're not. You got big ones, small ones. That looks pretty good. Hey, you doing? Yeah, there's a traceable for you if you want to play with it. You're more than welcome to download it. It's looking in the window or through the milk box. <laughs> we asked everybody. Um, I'm dating myself. My house when I grew up had a had a milk box where the the milkman would put the milk every day or whenever how often you ever did it. I was just wondering if anyone else had a milk box in their house growing up. See, I keep playing just how I roll. All right. We had one of those milk doors when I was very small. Oh, <laughs> you remember one then? <laughs> it was probably in a house that you you bought and was older when it was bought. I remember when we were, hmm, gosh, I can't even remember my age when they stopped doing that, but I was a kid when they stopped doing it. Young. Ten, maybe. No milk box, but we had, we did have a milkman, I remember. What did you yell like? I was, it was a bungalow my parents bought. At 69, yeah. I'd be about the, uh, I would have been about Eleven years old then. So kind of like a just rough. I want to put some rough, um, kind of like stucco here. Give it some character. Line work. Uh, uh, my grand did. She also had a bond bread man. Dawn came with goodies, and Grand would go out with her basket and load up. Awesome. I'm, yeah, I don't, we never had anything like that. It was always, um, well, I should, it was milk and butter, that type of thing. His nose is so shiny and cute. No, oh, thanks. <laughs> doesn't really look um, completely uh, round and jolly, but yeah, it's close. I think I put too much. Uh, no, it's rough. So whatever I would put on there probably wouldn't look right. Um, 
Let's see if I can get a little bit. I don't think so, though. Shine on there where his wrinkles would be. Uh, yeah. This is what I do is I um I look at it for a little while and then I'll see things and yeah, maybe I'll add to it a little bit. That. I think it needs to be a little darker in there. All right, I think I'm done. <laughs> we can get so carried away with stuff. I have to get some new white pens. All right. So what do you guys think? I like him. I think he's cute. So that's in my sketchbook. So it's quite uh, easy to do in your sketchbook. You don't have to do it in uh, watercolor. You just it it's a little different than using watercolor paper, but I'm not doing multi multi layers and extremely detailed painting. It's just um, for fun in my sketchbook to uh, help me relax and uh, de-stress. What do you guys do to de-stress? It's important. Um, well, thanks, Lori. Thanks, Jilly. Devin, I just saw Santa driving a rickshaw down a street in central New York. Seth after did a live... Oh, really? <laughs> I watch YouTube to de-stress. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, just, you know, get a cup of coffee or tea or whatever your beverage um, you like. Put your feet up and just relax. I find sometimes, though, I have to get away from social media. Because uh, it can get a little bit um, stressful, too, depending on what you're doing. But if you're just watching, like I find streaming can get uh, fairly stressful. So a lot of times I like to just film and then I have some music on and then I'll do a voiceover. And I enjoy that 
a whole lot better. Though it's kind of lonely because I don't have you guys. <laughs> but I don't feel rushed then. Um, any of you guys that do streaming, do you feel rushed when you do streams? I do art and craft and to have fun. Yeah. Yeah, it's uh, low. It's low stress. It's also you're not expecting a masterpiece. It's just because you like doing it. Thanks, Dorothy. I hope you have a good week. You feel rushed? Yeah. Yes, I feel like I talk faster. Oh, really, Lori? Yeah. I don't know why, but lately my recording have been getting lost. So I started streaming and making... Getting lost? When you download? But voiceovers and editing are difficult. Um, they do take l longer to do. Um, I guess it, it depends on what platform you do it on. Like, I'm, I mean, uh, program. I have, uh, oh, what's it called? Uh, Filmora. And it's pretty easy. And two, you could also, uh, when you're filming have have in your mind things that when you edit things out pause pause in those is those sections you can pause your your um when you're video recording and that saves a lot of time of editing so just pause when you're going to dry or when you're um, you need to go get something or, um, or also maybe if you don't have a pause button, then you could also, what I used to do when I first started, I used to put my hands down like this. And that meant when I went to go edit from when I put my hands down to a certain period was to be taken out because I didn't like it. So I always use my hands down like this. And then when I would, um, oh, wait a minute. I don't know if they are getting lost or I am forgetting to press. Oh, <laughs> I get it. Yes, I've done that many a time. Um, I'm too impatient to editing. Yeah. Well, you know, you get kind of spoiled when you do live streaming because you're doing the art and then you're done. So you're not doing the art and then editing for an hour or two hours later. Depending on, you know, how long you've edited or streamed for or recorded for. Problem is that I pause and then don't press. Oh, yes. Well, it's just something you have to get used to, right? And I have been enjoying the interaction and space spontaneity of live streaming for now yeah yeah the only thing with i find with live streaming is you don't get comments in your below your stream right you only get you only get your chat and if you want to improve your numbers youtube doesn't consider your chat uh, important to your algorithm. So you need to have more people uh, commenting down below or even another thing that the algorithm really uh, looks at is when people share. And um, you can also just press share but not send it out. And that counts in the algorithm. Did you know that? So something to consider 
because that can really help. I'm doing both live streams and videos, so I think I'm confusing YouTube algorithm. Uh, when I pause, the timer keep running and made my videos look longer than they were. Obviously, I was doing something wrong. Uh, yeah, depending on which um, program you're using. I know some of them are really confusing to use. Just pressed share. Aw, oh, thanks, Devin. <laughs> Yeah, it doesn't, you know, I know some people think, oh, I'm not sharing, I'm not sharing. What, what's it going to hurt? I should, even if you don't want to send it out to like Facebook or wherever, um, just press share and uh, don't send it out. I don't know why, but the algorithm detects that. Um I blame it on confuse, confusing the algorithm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, when you do both live and video, the algorithm doesn't like it. But um, apparently the algorithm has changed in the past month or two, I think they said, where it's now not based on... Um, your subscription numbers anymore it's about whether people share it like it and um uh, interaction in chat because if they see there's a lot of interaction then they send that out to have other people look at it Um, and it doesn't like having more than one niche. That is a problem for my channel, I think. Yeah, that, that's true, uh, Lori. Um, even with me doing watercolor and acrylic is, uh, I, you know, I don't understand that one because Look at the Lindsay uh, Frugal Crafter. She has all kinds. But then again, she has a big uh, subscription. So I don't know. I guess it I guess it comes down to what do you want out of YouTube? Do you want to be a YouTuber doing art? Or do you want to be an artist doing YouTube? So what's, what's the most important thing to you? That's the way I um, heard somebody else say that. And I thought, that makes a lot of sense. All I can do is do my thing and hope that some people watch. And yeah, that's the way I look at it now. I'm going to do what I like. Um, because if you start looking at all the uh, trends and stuff and try to um, do art with all those trends. That in itself is sucking your creativity out of what you want to do. And then you get um, stuck in that hamster cage of doing what everyone else is doing not what you want to do you know what I mean and that is uh, the biggest thing that um, bothers me bye Dorothy have a fantastic day so you really have to pay attention to what you love. And, and don't worry if it's just you like doing art or crafts or whatever you want to call it. Because it makes you happy and de-stresses you. And you're not worried about the numbers or making money online. 
then just do what you want to do. Um, even if you only have a few people watching at a time, that's like having somebody sitting in your room that you can talk to. And a lot of times that's what people want also. Um, I really, truly don't know if I would do a lot of work or art if it weren't for filming and um, coming on YouTube. I, I think I'd probably get stuck on the couch, to tell you the truth. So it depends on, you know, how you work. Yeah, I'll let you go and uh, maybe you can think about that and be content. My uh, ceramic videos do very well, but don't want to do just ceramic. Yeah. Yeah, they all, that's what they say. Eh? Oh, look at your numbers. See what's doing well. Who Who's watching it? But that's fine and dandy, but do you really want to do that all the time? <laughs> yeah, it's a motivator to me. Like, I live in a very, very small town. I'm an introvert. And this gives me a purpose of doing art. For me, I don't know about anyone else... For me, I have to have a purpose for um, doing art and stuff. I, I don't know why, where it can't, comes from, but I can't just do it uh, for no reason. I guess I'm frugal. I don't like to um, do things just to have fun for some reason. <laughs> I don't know why. I guess it's the frugalness in me and um, everything um, has been a struggle, so I don't want to waste anything. We enjoy spending time. Oh, thanks, Devin. <laughs> so I guess I'll let you go on that <laughs> little, uh, I don't know, rant or decide what you think or it might give you something to think about if you're you know upset about your numbers or something I I was you really upset about numbers and stuff but I've come to the decision that I'm just going to do what I like and if you don't like it you don't have to watch it type of thing because <laughs> it it literally stressed me out to a point that I was having anxiety attacks at night that's how bad it got so i had to do something to stop that now, thanks jilly all right i'll let you guys go and thanks so much for being here and listening to my ramblings and uh <laughs> hope to see you on thursday not sure what i'm gonna do yet but uh i will pre-post put a post up that I'm streaming. Yeah, definitely not worth stress. So, yeah. Your health comes first. And you gotta, you, you know, you can't be uh, chained to the YouTuber um, algorithm. All right. Thanks so much, guys. Love you all. And we'll see you on Thursday. Bye for now.